Hello, everyone. My name is Todd Nock. Welcome to the Art of Todd Nock Periscope broadcast. I've been broadcasting a lot on Facebook, but don't forget, uh, worry, uh, Periscope uh, viewers. I haven't forgot about uh, haven't forgotten about you. I just got back from. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Maybe I shouldn't be broadcasting today. <laughs> I just got back from uh, the Cincinnati Comic Expo, our first time in Cincinnati. It was incredible. Had such a fun time. Thanks for everyone who came out. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, we really appreciate it. All the great people of uh, Cincinnati and the Ohio, Kentucky area and surrounding areas uh, that came out to the convention. We had a great first Cincinnati Comic Expo. Thanks to everyone at Cincinnati Comic Expo for making such uh, su making it such a great con. We really had a great time and hope to be back again soon. And now i got to gear up for New York Comic Con. If you're going to be in the New York Comic Con area, then come to New York Comic Con because you're so close to the area already. Just come on in. Um, I'm at table T1, so if you're coming to the New York Comic Book Convention, find me at table T1 in Artist Alley in the North Hall. So, today, I'm going to draw some Howard the Duck. Why not? Howard the Duck, he's a great character, and he appears, he has a big role in the uh, Deadpool series I'm doing called Deadpool Too Soon. I've been hyping this for the past summer. We're getting close to release date. Issue 1 comes out October 19th. If you like Deadpool, if you like Howard the Duck, if you like Spider-Ham, Squirrel Girl, Rocket Raccoon, Groot, Punisher, Ant-Man... Deadpool too soon is the book for you. So come on in to uh, come on in to come on into the comic shop, whichever comic shop you go to. I, I'm inviting you into their store to uh, buy that comic. First issue, October 19th. So enough enough hype. Enough hype. This is about art, not hype. So we're gonna uh, plug into the rig here, get drawn. I'll do my best to answer questions. Um, as always, my focus is mostly on the art, so I m might miss a lot of your questions, especially if you're a first-time Periscope, Periscope viewer. Welcome. Feel free to post a comment or question. I'll do my best to answer if I can, but like I said, a lot of the art goes in, or a lot of the focus goes into the art. Again, I probably should not be broadcasting today. I probably don't have enough sleep yet, but I'm willing to, to push myself to the limits for you guys. So, here we go. All right. So here we go, Howard the Duck. Now Howard the Duck is a pretty interesting shape. He's got that kind of almost egg-shaped head. So I utilize some of the principles of drawing a human head, like the bisecting the head to know where to put the eyes and facial features, but things get really different when you get down closer to the bill area. And his head is such an odd shape, it takes up most of the post-it note, apparently. I want to keep in mind where the eyes and the bill meet. Got that little notch right there. Comes to the cheeks. Kind of think of it as a curved, flat rectangle for the top of the bill. Little nostrils right there. So thanks for all the hearts, gang. I appreciate that. Glad you're liking what you see. Appreciate that kind of support. Hope everyone's having a good start to the week. Well, it feels like the start to the week for me because I was traveling yesterday to get home from Cincinnati, so I'm just now starting my official studio work week here on a Tuesday. Can I recommend a good brand of pro markers to use for a semi-beginner without breaking the bank? Um, I can't really speak to any other markers than the ones I use, unfortunately, and that's Copic markers. Uh, so, um, but I know there are other brands out there. My encouragement is to uh, go to the art supply store and check out what they have. See, you know, test them out. See what see what works for you. See what price point works for you as well, both quality of marker and price point, and then uh, and then give that a whirl. So, I wish you all the best in your your marker illustrations for sure. Hello. To the person who posted comment hi, I caught that one. Hello to everyone. If they were to do uh, ever do another Howard the Duck movie, what would you want it to be about? Well, um, fortunately, Howard the Duck, a new Howard the Duck movie, would be able to utilize more of the Marvel universe. So, I'd like to see it um, see like kind of a Howard the Duck encountering a lot of different Marvel characters: Avengers, Spider Man. Guardians, so almost kind of like a big, big road trip movie where he 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 runs in kind of like a Pee Wee's Big Adventure kind of movie, and he keeps encountering different Marvel characters throughout his hero's journey. 
Something like that. Howard should be Infinity War. He should be in Infinity War. That would be so, so funny. So you got to give Howard the surly eyes, the bags under the eyes, the furrowed brow. He's a cranky, cranky character. Oh, Gwenpool first appeared in Howard the Duck? I don't I don't think I realized that. <laughs> that is funny. But it seems appropriate now that, now that I think more about it. All right. So I know a lot of people ask what pencils I, I use. Uh, today I'm starting with the the Pentel, <coughs> pardon me, Pentel Twist Erased uh, HB Lead 0.5 Lead. Uh, I'm using a thicker lead just for these, for the basic shapes. The 03 is better for the final, finer details, which you'll often see me use. But when I'm just wanting to break down big rough shapes, uh, a, a thicker lead works better for that. That's the Grinch. I can see a little bit of the Grinch right there. There's the Grinch right there. Can y'all see it now? That's the Grinch. Maybe a little bit of that is the Grinch. Oh, there we go. Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck and the Grinch are actually uh, alternate realities of each other. Not people, many people know that. It's not Marvel canon or anything. I have no authority to say this. I'm just throwing the rumor out there. So now I'm inking with the Pigma Micron 08. It's my go-to starting inking pen. Start inking the tuft of hair at the top of Howard's head. You live in Russia. How am I doing? I am doing well. How are you in Russia? I visited Russia in 1996. It was a really great time. Went to Moscow and St. Petersburg. Really enjoyed it there. Would love to come back to Russia someday. How difficult was it adapting such a stylized character like Howard to my own style. Um, it wasn't too terribly difficult. Um, just, you know, I referenced what had been done in the current Howard the, Co uh, Howard the Duck comics to make sure I was staying on model. And then just, um, you know, did some quick, quick sketches, kind of um, just practicing the shape of the head and, and just, um, just kind of got there. You know, it's like, like, um, just like an alien race sort of character. You know, I could draw a scroll. That's, that's a, a stylized humanoid and so Howard's just a little a little more stylized because he has a duck bill so um, so it didn't take it took it did take some practice for sure but I didn't think of him as like a cartoon character other than he is a an alien race of a Marvel character sort of thing in a, in a Marvel superhero world even though we know he is a duck but he comes from duck world so I guess that is an alternate planet, if not reality. So hopefully that answered your question there. <laughs> Howard and Dark Darkwing should have a crossover comic. That, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. How do I keep the lettering from fading on my microns? Yours keep fading. You know, I haven't had a problem with fading. I'm not quite sure sure what 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 it is you're encountering there um, that you're having having fading problems. I, I'm I'm so sorry. I I don't have advice for that. So far, my 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 microns have stayed stayed pretty uh, pretty solid. Now, uh, there was a problem with erasing, 
if I, if I have to bear down too hard when erasing, then it, it can pull up the micron. So that's why I try to pencil lightly so I can erase lightly so the, the micron stays, stays, uh, stays um, as vibrant as possible. Oh, the printed text on the Micron? Oh, that fading off? Oh, yeah, my, mine wears off all the time from heavy usage. And it doesn't matter. Really, actually, I don't mind it rubbing off because the more that the the, uh, the 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 lettering on the pen itself rubs off, the more I know that how long I've been using it and that I'm about to run out of ink and going to need to uh, to toss it for a new Micron. So it actually kind of helps me gauge how long I've been using that one particular Micron sometimes. So, yeah, the, the lettering on it doesn't really matter. Sometimes... And I'm used to looking at what, how, how the, the size of the tip. So even if I can't read the 08, I recognize that is a 08 size tip. So I can tell the difference between the 08, the 01, and the 005 just by looking at the tip. 01 and 005 are, are pretty close. Sometimes I might get a little confused, but but usually I can spot the difference visually. Some more bags under his eyes here. Bottom, bottom part of his bill starts to connect to his neck. Oh, you just noticed that mine always look fresh and new. That's because I tear through microns pretty fast. I buy them by the boxes. The majority of my inking is done with the the microns, so um, so I can I can I can wear out a micron in no time. So that's why, mo why most of mine look pretty pretty uh, nice and new. But you can see here on my zero one, the the C there, it's starting to. Uh, starting to fade so this this zero one's been getting some heavy heavy wear same on my double zero five here right there on the eye it's kind of hard to see in this lighting but it's starting to fade as well there was a time i went through uh, some microns for a really heavy detailed page i think i i used up I had to replace microns after that one double page spread. There was such heavy inks. Let's see, put that furrowed brow in there. We're almost done with the ink stage. Then it'll be Copic marker time. So let's tighten up his pupils and iris here. Put a little highlight in there. Oh, thank you for the kind words. Glad you enjoy watching me draw. I enjoy getting the chance to hang out with y'all while I draw, so thanks for tuning in to my broadcast, gang. And if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching on my YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe for future art videos. So I'm using the 05 there right now. I want to keep those details um, clean and tight. How do I feel about Faber Castells? Uh, I like them. Don't have, <laughs> pardon me, I don't have many of them, but the ones I do have, I have some uh, sepia toned ones. That they're really great. Good, good quality, quality pen. You draw so fast and the lines are so clean. Thank you. Thank you very much. A lot of practice. A lot, a lot of practice. Thank you for the kind words, gang. I gotta ink those nostrils there using the zero one. Pull a little 
little more of that br bill over. A little detail there. Let's beef up some of the lines here on his hair so that they pop a little more in the foreground. Just a little bit of a shadow there. Okay, now it's time to erase with my trusty Statler Mars plastic eraser. Erasing gently. Being careful to not crinkle the paper. Pulling down in a way, since it's flipped up like this, just pulling down, not going back up, because that will crinkle the paper out. Done that many a time in the past. Even on a previous broadcast, I did that once. Got too distracted in answering questions while erasing. Oops, I missed a question there about markers. So sorry. So sorry I missed that. Feel free to repost. Hopefully I'll get a chance to catch it. All right, there we go. So let's, ah, nope, not, don't, there we don't go yet. Keep seeing another spot of uh, pencil line. There we go. So let's uh, start with the bill here with some Y... R07. Gonna start dark right now. The darker shade of orange. Not to be confused with a deeper shade of soul. That's an early 90s alternative rock song reference for those who listen to alternative music back in 1990. How many years have I been drawing? Uh, all my life. All my life. Earliest memories are of drawing. So now we're, that was some YR07. YR now we're using YR16. Pulling through the orange I have laid down. And now a little YR12, YR112, to now blend the lighter shade into those darker shades. Now we need some pink for the inside of his mouth, so some RV32 here for the base of the inside of his mouth, and we're going to use a darker shade of pink for the tongue. Some RV95. RV95. It would be cool to see you do a <coughs> Copic Colored comic like Mahmoud Asrar did on Supergirl. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love Mahmoud's work, and uh, it would be fun to give that a try sometime. So let's see... Howard's eyes are a little orangish, so we're going to use that same YR12 a bit here, a little YR16 again, just a little bit here, and we're going to come darker here with the YR27, right there next to the highlight, underneath there. Kind of gives it a brownish orange sort of flavor. All right, so let's uh, let's give him a light purple shirt here. So let's go going with some BV11, BV11, blue violet, one one. It's looking a little gray on here, and that's okay the light purple mixing with the orange of the paper. Let's see, now for some, uh, now we gotta do the, uh, now Howard's a white feathered character, 
So I need to uh, do my white trick with my white colored pencil. So what I do, since I'm going to be using white colored pencil on this, I want to have first have the, the shading. Oh, you know what? I should shade out his bill first. I want to shade his bill before that. So some um, <clears throat> warm gray three. Is warm gray three dark enough? Hmm. Not quite. I'm going to have to bump that up to a warm four. Which character would I like to draw outside of the big two companies? Well, I would say Invincible, but I've already done that on the Invincible Universe series. <clears throat> um, Tick. Tick would be fun to draw. I love the Tick. Just heard his Amazon show got picked up. <clears throat> Pardon me. Getting a little hoarse there. So congrats to the Tick on, your, on his new TV series picked up on Amazon Prime. If you haven't seen the pilot, check it out. It's very interesting how they're handling the tick this go around. Very, very interesting. I'm very intrigued by it. It's almost got more of a mystery flavor to it, which I really appreciate. So that's some warm four there. And now let's pull, pull a little warm three through there. Do I usually read comics not drawn by me? Most of the comics I read are not drawn by me. I, I read a lot of a lot of comics and uh, or as many comics as I'm able to, and I enjoy all sorts of creators creators works. All right, now let's get into the uh, the shading technique here, the the gray white technique that I was talking about. So coming in much darker than I would if this were on white paper. So war, uh, cool gray number five. Gonna put in places, all the places where I want shadows, like under his eyes, especially, to make him look a little more haggard. Not haggard though, haggard. Through the cheek there, underneath the bill. Do I use a day planner? Any tips for time management? No, I do not use a day planner. Uh, maybe if I need to remember something, I'll, I'll. Add it to my iPhone calendar, like I did this morning to remind myself not to be late for my haircut appointment this week. So, uh, but no, I don't have really have any tips on time management in, in that regard. Put a little feathery texture here. A little more through the hair there. And then from here, let's take some cool gray three and just kind of bring some of this gray a little further into the white spots or the open spots. All right. Now, before I get to the white pencil trick, oh, actually, I need to do the same for his eyes. I want to just sculpt out his eyes a little bit. Some cool gray four right through here. Just kind of rounding it out a little bit. So all the places that should be white will end up being kind of white due to the watercolor pencil, which I'll be utilizing soon. Right now I want to drop in a background fade. So we're going to start with the neutral grays, neutral gray five. I'm going to do a fade dark at the top to light lighter at the bottom. In fact, that neutral gray five is going to need a refill. I'm going to, have to do a lot of refilling before New York Comic Con. Then some neutral four pulling from the five down into the orange. Some neutral gray three. Just each, each step down, pulling from the previous color down for a smooth transition, or smoothish, smooth like as smooth as I I want it to be. It just depends on how much saturation I utilize. Now for some neutral two, 
If you've just joined us, welcome to the Periscope broadcast. Thanks for tuning in. First timers, long timers, glad everyone's here. We'll neutral two and a little neutral one. Starting to break up the, lot of the shapes as I get towards the bottom of the page. Don't want to lose all of the orange. There we go. So we got now a, a fade there. Now I take my watercolor pencil. It is the Prismacolor white watercolor pencil. Blanc. Blanc is white in French. Um, now I'm just going to start coloring in here. I'm just going to color all of this in. Let's start with the eyes. So as I color over the orange paper and the gray I've, I've put, see the difference there? It was kind of darker here, but when the white goes over it there, it lightens up a little bit. So I had to use a darker shade of gray to account for the lightening, the lightening, not lightning, like from the sky, but lighten, the lightened effect of the gray. So I still maintain that gray, that uh, gray, gray color there. So we still see the the curvature of the eye and the um, the shading, and the same goes for his feathery texture here. Um, just start coloring in over that gray and orange, and because I used a darker shade of gray, we still see the gray underneath the white pencil, but it's just a little bit lighter to the right shade of light gray that I would ultimately desire if I had illustrated this on white paper. I would have used a much lighter shade of cool gray. So I had to account for this procedure. So you can see how the gray is lightening up there, gang. It was all planned. Kind of a trick I stumbled upon um, one time when I was trying to find a way to utilize more white instead of just using a gel pen for something as large as an area like this. It's very difficult to fill that all in with gel, gel pen. So I thought I'll try using white colored pencil. And then when I saw how it, you could still see marker underneath, then uh, I started to craft this technique through experimentation, trial and error. It almost gives more of a fine shading. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Because trying to put the Copic marker over the white pencil doesn't look as good. It just doesn't doesn't work quite right. Just because of the, the textures and stuff the on the paper there. So. Like the, the waxiness of the, the pencil doesn't respond well if you put the Copic marker over it, for my taste, for my preferences. So that's why I do Copic marker first, then white over it. And into the, the tuft of hair here. You love how artists develop their own techniques. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, that's why I say, that's why I encourage trial and error. Give it a shot. You're going to learn something. Maybe if it doesn't work out perfectly the first time, you're going to learn something. It's going to spark a new idea, possibly. And you you move into a new technique and becomes a a new a new weapon in your art arsenal that you can utilize. A new te a new a new tool, a new new thing you can utilize. So there we go. Now we have a white Howard the Duck on an orange piece of paper. How is this possible? Magic. So, um, let's see, I want to shade out his uh, shirt there just a smitch. So let's get a little cool gray four. Just add some little darker, darker shades through here. Just to get a feel of the fold of the collar there. All right, now it's uh, time for the finishing move here, gang. If you're a long-time viewer of my my Periscope or Facebook broadcasts and my previous post-it notes, then you, you know what's coming up next. It's time for the white gel pen. The Uniball Signo, let me show that to you so you can read the logo there. Uniball Signo white gel pen. 
my preferred gel pen for outlining my characters on my post-it notes. I feel it gives a really great uh, flow to the ink. I also like to use the Jelly Roll white gel pen, but that's for smaller, tinier, finer details. This one is a little bit more broad tipped and works, I feel, much better for outlining for my, my style, tastes, and preferences. So I utilize both. I always have both. In fact, here's my Jelly Roll gel pen right here. <clears throat> I always have it here at my, my drafting table and in my convention art, art case as well. So let's see, come around here around the eyebrow. Maintain those fluffy tufts. From his eyebrow, around his cheek, now around his bill here. <clears throat> Pardon me, gang. So sorry I've been so so hoarse and coughing today. I'm doing fine health-wise. Just, I don't know, we just came home to a heat wave, so probably got a little dried out while I was sleeping last night. So I've been trying to hydrate. All right, so there's the outline. Now I do want to put, <coughs> pardon me, oh my gosh, a little highlight that a little highlight we established here in his eye. I want that to be a brighter white than than the than the white part of his eye. So utilizing the white gel pen here alone, maybe a little extra white highlight there, right on the pupil. Let's uh, grab my Pigma Micron to uh, sign this. Actually, I don't want to use the zero eight. I want to use the zero one. Just drink some hot tea. Yes, yes, I've had my first cup of hot tea. I need a little bit more. My wife made me a cup of Lady Grey tea that she picked up when, on our trip to England back in July and August. Today is the 27th, I believe. Yes, 27th. Looky there, I actually remember the day this time. And there we go. <coughs> so, what I'll do is I'll flip the camera around and I'll do a little bit of Q&A, answer any questions that I might have missed. I can't promise I can answer everyone's question, but if you had a question I didn't get a chance to answer, feel free to start typing it in and we'll see uh, how many questions I can answer before I need to sign off. So let me flip the camera around. How do you know the colors you need when buying Copic markers? Um... I don't know, I just know what I like. I guess I just know what I like. And what I like about my art supply store is that you can, they have little tester pieces of paper so I can test the color out and see what kind of the shade comes out of the ink. And then that's how I make my choices. So I picked a, the, the kind of the basic reds, blues, greens, yellows that I wanted, you know, the basic colors as my kind of foundation. And then I started to fill in the gaps either lighter or darker around that, um, just by personal taste and preference. And it's okay to have your own tastes and preferences. What is the name? I missed your question there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Feel free to repost. Hopefully I can catch it there um, the next time it comes up. So were there any other questions, gang? I'm so sorry if I've been missing a lot of your questions. I appreciate y'all's patience. What school have I done? I went to uh, well, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. Nailed it. Uh, had art classes in uh, my junior high and high school uh, classes or high schooling. I uh, was able to take those as electives. And I went to the Art Institute of Dallas for some more professional training. How do I draw Spider-Man's webs? Ah, it's challenging to answer that here in a Q&A, but if you swing by my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Toddknock, I have some Spider-Man, several Spider-Man videos in there, and I explain kind of my, many times I'm explaining my thought process on how I draw those webs. So that would probably be a better way to answer your question is to direct you to those videos. I actually have a Spider-Man tutorial playlist on Toddknock, uh, on my Toddknock uh, YouTube channel, so that'll get, uh, 
just link you to right all, all those videos. Have I ever met Todd McFarlane? Yes, I have. I've met him a couple of times. Really nice guy, and I'm a big fan of his art. Huge fan of his art. I was uh, still in high school when his uh, Amazing Spider-Mans came out, and those blew my mind. I love, love, love Todd McFarlane's Amazing Spider-Man run, and his Spider-Man series as well. I saw a few more questions had posted, and I missed those. Uh, I'm so uh, sorry that I'm having a hard time keeping up with your questions while I'm answering the previous questions. So we're good for maybe one or two more. If Okay, will I ever come to Canada? I hope to come to Canada. Love to come back. It's been a while. I want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all the kind words. Thanks for posting the questions. So sorry I missed so many of them. Uh, I'll be posting this shot of uh, this post-it of... Um, Howard on all my social media. So if you want to see the finished product, swing by my Twitter, Art of Todd Facebook page, Instagram. Love posting on Instagram because it's all about pictures and that's my jam. So uh, join me on all those um, social networks so you can see this art and all the other sorts of art that I post. Uh, I really appreciate all of y'all's support. You're awesome. Hopefully I'll see y'all at uh, the upcoming uh, New York Comic Con um, as well as the 2017 con schedule. I haven't even set that yet, so hopefully I'll be coming to uh, your area in 2017. Thanks again. Like I said, y'all are all, uh, you all are awesome, and be sure to read Deadpool 2 soon. And it was just announced, might as well throw this out there as well, get this hype going, Spider-Man Deadpool number 12. I will be drawing Spider-Man Deadpool number 12 coming out in December. So if you read the Spider-Man Deadpool series, make sure you pick up issue 12. If you're not reading the series, start. It's a great series. Joe Kelly and Ed McGinnis are awesome. We've had issues by um, Riley Brown and Scott Koblish, regular Deadpool artists. Uh, Penn Gillette is writing issue 12, illustrated or issue 11, illustrated by Scott Koblish. And uh, I'm drawing issue 12, which is written by uh, comedians um, Paul Shearer and um, Nick Giovanetti. So how do you like that? So uh, it's our Christmas issue. Make sure you catch it. Gang, thanks again for tuning in. Now I really got to sign off because I got to get to work. I uh, hope y'all had a great day and I'll see y'all soon.